All right, let's take a look at menus in this video. Basically, a menu displays a list of choices on a temporary surface. The choices appear when users interact with the button, action, or some other type of control. Now, as always, the first step is to import the appropriate module. So in material.module.ts, I'm going to import mat menu module and add it to the material array. Now let's go to app.component.html and over here to create a menu, we use the mat menu component. To specify the choices for a menu, we use the button elements with a mat menu item attribute. Button, front end is the text, and we add the mat menu item attribute. Similarly, let's also have backend as a menu item. If you save this and take a look at the browser, you're not going to see anything. That is because by itself, the mat menu element does not render anything. It has to be triggered from a UI element or programmatically. So let's add an element to open the menu. I'm going to add a button element and add the attribute mat flat button for some styling. The text is going to be menu. Now that we have the element, we need to associate the menu with this element. And that is a quick two-step process. First step on the mat menu component, create a template reference variable and assign to it the mat menu directive. App menu is the variable name and assign mat menu. Second step, link the button with the template reference variable using the mat menu trigger for directive. So on this button, mat menu trigger for and then assign the reference variable app menu. In simple English, hey, there is a menu called app menu which can be triggered by this menu button. Now, if we save the file and take a look at the browser, we have the menu button. Click on the button and you can see the menu. So this is how you create a basic menu. Next, let's see how to create a nested menu. The first step is to create the sub menu. And we are going to repeat the process of creating a menu and attaching a template reference variable. So mat menu, I'm going to add three menu items. The first one is going to be Angular. The second one, React. And the third one, View. On the mat menu component, I'm going to add the reference variable. This is going to be called sub menu and we assign the mat menu directive. All right, we have created a sub menu. Now this is a sub menu for the front end choice in the main menu. So all we have to do is add the trigger directive again. On this item, mat menu trigger for sub menu. In simple English, hey, this front end menu choice is going to trigger this sub menu. If you save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the nested menu. You don't have to click on front end. When you hover on the choice, the sub menu is opened. Angular, React, and View. Now, one of the useful options when it comes to a menu is with respect to the positioning of the menu. We have X position and Y position attributes. So on the mat menu component, we can specify X position and Y position. X position can take values of before or after and Y position can take values of above or below. Let's go with after and above. 
If you take a look at the browser, click on menu, you can see that the menu opens to the right, so exposition is working fine, but the menu still opens below the button. And that is simply because there is no space available at the top. Let's reposition the button. In the CSS file, let me add a class center, the margin is going to be 10 rems. Back in the HTML, let's add the class to the button element. Now, if we go back to the browser and click on the element, you can see that the menu opens to the right and to the top. So X position and Y position, before, after for X position, above and below for Y position. These attributes control the position of the menu. Now the last thing I want to talk about is lazy rendering. By default, the menu choices are initialized even before the menu is opened. That is, even before clicking on the menu button, the choices have already been set for the menu. We can defer initialization until the menu is open using the ng template directive and mat menu content attribute. This allows us to have dynamic content as menu choices. Let's see how. I'm going to create a new menu. Mat menu, I'm going to add a reference variable called lazy menu and set it to mat menu. Within the menu component, we are going to use the ng template directive. And within this directive, we specify the menu items. The first one is going to be a settings button. And the second one is going to be the text logout. Now what I am going to do is create two trigger buttons to this same menu. Button, the text is going to be Vishwas. Mat menu trigger four is equal to lazy menu. Similarly, another button that says code evolution and we trigger the same lazy menu. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, if I click on Vishwas, the menu is not quite opening and that is because we left out the mat menu content attribute on the ng template tag. So let's save the file and try again. I'm going to go back to the browser, click on Vishwas and you can see we have the menu. Click on code evolution and you can see that we have the same menu again. Now what we want is if I click on Vishwas, I need the choice to be logout Vishwas. And if I click on code evolution, I want the menu to say logout code evolution. Basically, we are looking at dynamic choices. For that, we make use of mat menu trigger data attribute. So back in the component HTML, on the trigger buttons, we add in an extra attribute. This attribute is mat menu trigger data. This is going to be equal to an object. Let's pass in a name, which is Vishwas. Similarly, on the second trigger button, we're going to pass in name, but this time it is going to be code evolution. Now I've just reformatted this and we have the two buttons still in place. One for Vishwas and one for code evolution. Now that we have specified the data, on the ng template tag, we create a local variable. Let name is equal to name. And in the menu choice, we can now use interpolation with that variable. Double curly braces and name. Now if you go back to the browser, click on Vishwas, it says logout Vishwas. And if I click on code evolution, it says logout code evolution. So what is happening is on the trigger button, we specify the mat menu trigger data attribute. 
and we specify the name. So we are saying, hey, I know that this button is a trigger for a menu, but when I am triggering that menu, let me pass some additional information that the menu can use to dynamically render some data. Now in the mat menu component, we use the ng template tag and on the ng template tag, we specify this name variable that we want to access and that can be interpolated in the button element. That is how we have logout Vishwas. Let's add one more property so that we really understand how it works. To the trigger data object, I'm going to add a new property called hobby. For Vishwas, the hobby is football. And for code evolution, the hobby is teaching. Now in the menu on the ng template tag, we declare another variable. Let hobby is equal to hobby. And now we can add a new menu choice and bind the hobby. So button hobby is bind hobby. And let me also add mat menu item. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, click on Vishwas, hobby is football, click on code evolution, hobby is teaching. You can see that we have different menu choices for the two elements. Same menu, but dynamic content. All right, that is about navigation and menus in Angular Material. Let me quickly point you to the documentation. Go to components, go to navigation, menu, API for the module that you have to import, and then the examples to take a look at some of the examples you can use. In the next section, let's take a look at components related to layouts in Angular Material. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.